Hello, Pastor Brian here. You know, you may have noticed uh, in uh, the recent weeks here that uh, we've been putting up on True to His Word uh, some teachings that I have been given recently at uh, Hope Church in Wilton, Connecticut. And the reason for that is uh, this is a church that since uh, Joyce and I moved here to Connecticut uh, about a year and a half ago, uh, we've been attending. It, it's uh, nearby. Well, uh, just this last February, the senior pastor uh, resigned his position to uh, take a position in Illinois. And uh, the elders have asked me if I would be involved in filling the pulpit in the interim time. You know, not all the time, but a lot of the time. So, uh, so that's what I'm going to be doing here, uh, it, you know, for the near future um, on, a, on a relatively regular basis. But I also want to uh, continue, as I'm able, to do these short little podcasts. And this gives me the opportunity here to remind you of something that I haven't said for quite a while. And that is, I invite you to, to ask questions to send in questions uh, regarding the scriptures, regarding life as they relate to scriptures and our, and our Christianity and things like that. And, and uh, I would love to um, answer uh, as many as I can uh, openly, publicly. I, I, I want to answer them, them all at least uh, email-wise, but I would, uh, I would love to take the opportunity to answer some of them uh, on this forum. And, and I like that because it gives me a public forum to answer uh, some of these questions that I think are relevant questions for the body of Christ and for folks that are checking in to uh, Christianity. So with that in mind, uh, this last week I spoke at uh, Hope Church on Acts chapter 1, verses 1 to 11, where uh, the church is beginning a series through Acts, which I'll be taking part in. Uh, but in those first 11 verses, sort of the, the beginning of Acts, I, I pointed out that we see right there the stand that Christians take. Um, uh, the main stands in relation to the past, we stand on the resurrection of Jesus Christ. In relation to the presence, present, <laughs> we stand on the power of the Holy Spirit, not our abilities. And in relation to the future, we stand on the return of Jesus Christ. And in sharing those things as regarding the resurrection, I had, uh, I had quoted 1 Corinthians 15, 6, um, where uh, uh, talking about Jesus' resurrection, Paul says, And he was seen by over 500 brethren at once, of whom the greater part remain to the present, but some have fallen asleep. And, and then uh, in relation to his return, of, quotes, of course, I <coughs> quoted 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 16 and 17. The Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel and with the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive and remain will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And thus we will always be with the Lord. What a, what a wonderful hope. But uh, it raised some questions. And we just started last week. It's something else the elders want to do is right after the service for any that are interested uh, to have a, a brief question and answer time with the teaching pastor. So we did that for the first time this last Sunday. And there was a group of people that remained for just a few minutes afterwards for a question that they might have. One question that came up in that series was, what happens to believers when they die? Uh, the scripture talks about them, uh, you know, some have fallen asleep. And then uh, the, the dead in Christ will rise first. And does that mean that we go into some sort of a, a soul sleep, you know, awaiting the, the, the end of the days when the great resurrection of of believers takes place in the rapture of the living? Does that mean that? Is, is there such a thing as is, is a soul sleep? And the answer to that from scripture is very emphatic. And the answer is no, that's not the case. That when a believer dies, we 
are ushered immediately into the presence of the Lord, our soul and our spirit. We go directly to heaven. I like the way uh, the Apostle Paul describes it in 2 Corinthians chapter 5. He begins that chapter with these words, verses 1 and 2. Uh, we know that if our earthly house, this tent, <laughs> he calls our body this tent, is destroyed, we have a building from God, a house made without hands, eternal in the heavens. For in, the, in this we groan earnestly, desiring to be clothed with our habitation, which is, is from heaven. Down in verse 6, then he says, So we are always confident, knowing that while we are at home in the body, we are absent from the Lord. For we walk by faith, not by sight. But we are confident, yes, well pleased, rather to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord. Did you catch that? We are that moment when we are absent from the body. Now, that's not soul sleep. Soul sleep is, you know, you're asleep in your body until the resurrection. Not the case. He says we are literally absent from the body. We've left the body. Well, what happens? We are present with God the Lord. That is something that happens immediately. It's our great graduation. I am convinced that we, we don't really lose consciousness as we are fading away from this old world. Heaven is opening to us and we are being ushered directly into heaven and into the presence of the Lord. Uh, this is such a real, wonderful event that in chapter 15 of 1 Corinthians, Paul says, and quoting scripture, O death, where is your sting? It's like the sting of death has been removed. It's gone. You know, several years ago, I had a very real near-death experience. I happened to be in the hospital at the time, and I had a, a blood clot in my leg that broke loose and went into my lungs. That's a pulmonary embolism. People die from that. And I almost did. Um, they uh, had put me on, on a gurney and were uh, uh, ushering me into uh, ICU. And uh, to let you know what that is like, you know, a pulmonary embolism is a very painful way uh, for people to die. Um, it, it, it attacks your lungs and every breath becomes extremely painful. You sort of gasp for air. And as you, as you take a little suck, it's like pain sears through your chest and your body. Um, as I was laying there on this gurney, uh, under my breath, I was just crying out, Jesus, Jesus. And I had the most amazing sensation of his presence just coming over me, his, his love just coming over me. It was like he took me in his arms and was just hugging me. I was overwhelmed. I was overwhelmed with joy. I, mean, I was laying there on this gurney. Tears were flowing out the sides of my eyes like this flowing out. And I even remember thinking at the moment, because the doctor, it was a woman doctor, she was looking, looking down at me. I thought to myself, I bet she thinks I'm crying out of pain. But I'm not. I'm crying out of unmitigated sheer joy. The pain was immaterial. It was there, but it was immaterial. I was overwhelmed with joy. At that moment, I truly felt like everything that needed to happen, death-wise, for me to die, had happened. And I was right on the fringe, the cusp of eternity. Uh, if somebody would have asked me at that moment, Brian, do you think you're, 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 you're going? Uh, I would have said, uh, how easily I could. I don't think there's anything left to happen except to slip into eternity. But I honestly don't think I am. And indeed, wasn't that the case? 
But the point of it is, brethren, death for the believer, listen, isn't anything to fear. No, it, it, it's, it's a graduation event into his presence. Since I had that experience, I don't fear death anymore. So it'll happen when it happens. But I'm kind of hoping, as I'm sure many of you are, that that day of the rapture, when he comes into the air and calls us to be with him before we die, will take place. Man, that would be great. But you know, for those of us who experience, cross that, that threshold into his presence before the rapture, um, I'm sure that, uh, that we'll, be, we'll be clothed in heavenly garments in his presence, rejoicing in his presence, and just awaiting the day of the resurrection of our eternal resurrected body, just like uh, the resurrection of Jesus Christ himself. Um, but we've entered eternity. And you know, eternity, <laughs> I mean, uh, Scripture says a thousand years is like a day. You know, it's just, you're just bound up in, in now e the et eternal perspective. You know, uh, my parents were strong believers. And my dad died in 2008 and my mother passed on in 2010. And I know they're just in the presence of the Lord right now rejoicing. Uh, but because they're in eternity, from their perspective, I would imagine it's sort of like this. They're getting there and they're just overwhelmed with where they are and they're rejoicing in where they are. And all of a sudden, if the rapture delays, there I am. Hi, mom and dad, I'm here, <laughs> you know, rejoicing uh, in the presence of the Lord. And I know from their perspective now, they are looking forward to that day, that day of the resurrection and the, and the rapture uh, more than even we are. And boy, aren't we as believers looking forward to it. Well, you know, it's interesting, he had said, talking about that rapture in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, he had said just a couple of verses before that in verse 14, if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so God will bring with him those who, fall, who sleep in Jesus. There it is. They're with him now. And when he comes back, they're coming with him they will come and have a bodily resurrection, just like Jesus came back to his body and had a bodily resurrection. And then we who are alive and remain, he says, will be caught up together with them in the twinkling, he says in 1 Corinthians 15, the twinkling of an eye. We're going to be instantly in his presence. Oh, what a glorious day that'll be. And you know that we look forward to that, don't we? Well, I'll tell you, the way things are going in this world, it looks like that day uh, could be sooner rather than later. So be encouraged. Uh, God is good. He has a wonderful future, eternal future, for those who have put their trust in Him through their faith in Jesus Christ his son, his only begotten son, who is God himself in the flesh. For God so loved the world. <laughs> I love that. So loved the world. That means anyone in it. That he gave his only begotten son. That whoever believes in him will not perish but have eternal life. Hallelujah. Talk to you later.